What happens when you under torque or over torque a bolt when you install it for climbing? So we've pre-drilled these holes. They are clean and show us the bolt, Bobby. So this is a, what's commonly known as a Powers five piece. I've oh. always been curious about why it's called a five piece because I count a lot more pieces than that. <laughs> and then if you're counting metal pieces, there's only four. So, um, yeah, let's let's count how many five piece pieces there are. And and this piece actually has a little stopper there that's missing. That's just to tell you. Um, that's just to hold it in place so you Norm don't normally um, over screw it. So um, that would be you one. Install it. That would be one, and then this would be two. Yep. Sticker is three, four, five, six, seven. The crusher, crusher. eight. Nine, nine. Yep. <laughs> so powers, bolt, nine piece bolts. And you have to take them apart to get the hanger on if you're using a three eighths hole hanger. Which is ideal for a three eighths inch yep. bolt. Otherwise the hanger will peel off at forces you can't generate. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start with what? Uh, uh, the torque specs that torque are- spec. yep. Okay, so the, what is the torque spec on this? 12. Yeah, but that's what pretty is low. Interesting is in if you look really close, you can see the torque spec for these bolts. But right below that, there's a very clear installation um, guideline: uh, drill the hole, clean the hole, pound in the bolt, which we're about to do, and then finger tight, and then three or four turns after finger tight. And your finger tight is probably different than my finger tight, right? Yep. <laughs> So, wow, I have a feeling that's going to be hard to pull out, even if you don't tighten it at all. Ooh, it just got bright. <laughs> that'll all make right, so let's, yeah, there's no, there's no, no finger, finger tightening, tightening that. that. Okay. So, there are digital torque wrenches that are probably even better than this. No way. Is it not going up yet? Um, so we are to one. Okay, that's one. Okay, we're doing it to the air. <laughs> two. <laughs> this is hilarious. Uh, I think we might be getting close to 12. Tell me. Keep going. You're going. You're almost at 15. Keep going. Uh, go to we... go to here. Okay. Okay. Stop. So is that two and a quarter, or two and a half? No, you can keep going. I'm trying to get to 12. Yeah, that's that's touching the 15 line, but barely. So that's. That's 12. So that was what? Two and a half? Uh, no, it was pretty close to three. Pretty close to three, and they said yeah. three or four? Three or four. Wow, they were kind of right. Yeah. Just, you know, it's a, it's a range. If you don't have a torque wrench, you know, it. it's kind of nice to know how many turns it needs. Do we have a normal size wrench? Uh, we have a few. So... Let's be real. No one's really going to carry a torque wrench up a rock or out hiking anywhere. So... We're gonna use a small wrench, something that we would carry, and see how much uh, it feels like if it's really easy to do this. And that means you can accidentally over torque it. But if you just bring a tiny wrench and you pull muscle, you know, then, then you know like you're not gonna accidentally over torque it to a dangerous level. Which the, the th thought, the request that we've gotten about this is that we would compromise the stud and the threads on it by cranking it down too much and stressing out that, that metal. How hard is that to pull? Yeah, I'm not getting much more on that. No? No. You'd be rubbing some knuckles if you did? Yeah, I'm losing more skin off my knuckles. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Okay, so we can say that this 6-inch or 150-millimeter wrench is a 12-torque-pound wrench. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe 10 if you're Ryan. Okay, what are you doing with this one? So this one we're just going to tap in and put no torque on it. Okay. 
so. We'll see if Bobby drills his holes too close together here. Zero percent to specs. I don't know, that doesn't look like it's gonna come out that easy. Uh, it's tight enough that the hanger's not moving too much. Yeah, it's moving a little bit, not, not too much. Yeah. All right, so then what are you gonna do here? So this one, let's do 50%. Yeah, we could do, what, one and a half turns? Yeah. Or I'll just shy under 10, between the five and 10 mark. Yeah. And then the next hole, I think we're gonna do 200%. Okay, this is a time-lapse of these two bolts getting installed. That's super interesting. He just put on, uh, what, three turns? Three and a quarter, maybe. Barely over three, just like our first one, but it got twice as much, about 25 uh, torque pounds. So just turning something three or four times doesn't mean anything. It's all in how it engages in the rock and how it starts off with. So, but it, I think the size of your wrench, I think is more consistent than how many turns you're turning your bolt, so. Now we're gonna turn the next one to see if we can just break it, just keep turning it until we cannot turn it anymore or if we break it. Okay, what happened, Bobby? So we started to round off the top of the bolt there. Um, our socket has lots and lots of points, which um, is less engagement, but it's easier to. So how many turns did you get? Uh, eight and a half. And it stopped around 50. It wouldn't really go above 50. Yeah. We had a, a turn or a turn in it, or a turn or two turns at 50. And it didn't really increase much after that. Yeah. So let's uh, pull all these in tension and see if and how much they're compromised. really bad um, okay let me see the bolt all right that's I don't know let's see what the other ones come out at this broke at this came out at 14.94 kilonewtons a couple thoughts here while Bobby's doing this we are using plated steel hangers. They're the ones why they look a little bit shinier. You really need to use stainless steel when you're using this in real life. Um, this, this is not gonna stay outside, so it's okay to use a cheaper hanger because I'm testing the bolt. I'm not testing the hanger, so it saves a few bucks. So this concrete is softer than granite. I've had granite actually uh, spall like this before. I've also had Sandstone do better than this before. So it's, it depends on what kind of rock you're at, where you're at, uh, depends on the Small bolt. Bolts. Small bolts make a difference, shorter bolts make a difference. So this concrete's great for an all around uh, test bed because it gives us kind of like a, a middle ground. And we are gonna be able to take this these machines out and do more tests in granite. We've already done some. And we've done like a hundred brake tests in sandstone. So hopefully I can go and find a lab. If you know of a place I can send a chunk of concrete to to get tested, please put that in the comments below. I do wanna get the concrete tested to see what the PSI is so we know what we're working with here. But it's super good enough for what we're gonna do. Let's pull the next one. Okay, so that came out 
without even really bending it. Wow. It seems like it would stay in there so much better. Wave bolts, I think, gave us the same result when we just hammered them in without glue. Uh, I bet in shear this would do a lot better, though. So this had zero torque on it. Let's do, uh, let's do 50% torque now. Oh boy. Oh. All right, so it bent, it came out, and it's wrecking my concrete. Man, that's, well, it has been raining. It happens. 16, 16.02 kilonewtons. Okay, I guess I'm not gonna have to remove this concrete when we're done testing things. <laughs> this was similar results to our sandstone when we used short mechanical bolts. Uh, it basically did this, which may or may not be, oh, never mind. Okay, um, what do we get? Oh, we're on this side now. Trying to chase the sun. 13.7. And that was at 200% torque. So, wow. Well, that's what happens when you pull it as hard as you can. It like compressed it. And then, I know, it just looks really, really cool. So, what'd we get? 10.30.